The U.S. military is facing a growing recruiting shortfall, a shortfall so large that legislators are getting concerned. The Army has to recognize that there's been an evolution in uh, that young population, and if you're going to target that young population um, for service, you've got to make it appealing to them. The pool of potential recruits has been dropping for years. So the three biggest reasons uh, for a small pool of eligible recruits are criminal backgrounds, healthcare and obesity specifically, and financial issues. The Army and the other military services this year are facing what they're describing as the most challenging recruiting environment since the all-volunteer force era began in 1973. The latest figures show that only about 23% of uh, young uh, men and women in the United States meet the criteria to join, whether that's physical fitness, health, criminal background check. Lawmakers on both sides of the aisle are obviously very concerned about the military's recruitment efforts because this is coming at a time where Russia's war in Ukraine is changing global order, as well as China saber rattling with Taiwan and in the South China Sea. When unemployment is low, the military struggles to get recruits. And with unemployment hovering around 3.5%, it can be tough to convince young people to sign up. The fiscal year for the U.S. Army ends in September, and the Army has only reached 50% of its recruiting goal for the year as of mid-July. The U.S. military needs a lot of people. The U.S. Army alone must get tens of thousands to sign up every year to replace those who leave the service. The Army had a goal of signing up 60,000 people this year, but according to the Secretary of the Army, they could end up close to 15,000 short of that goal. Each sister service branch is going to also have to think about their retention tactics, whether it's offering enlistment bonuses or other incentives to keep people in our current military force. One tool the military has in times like these are big cash bonuses. These bonuses usually apply to certain understaffed jobs and also have stipulations such as finishing training to be fully paid out. The Army is offering $40,000 for Special Forces candidates, and the Navy is offering bonuses that can range up to over $100,000 for eligible veterans to sign up. Keeping troops in who are looking to exit the service is another way to bolster numbers. The Marines have recently had some success in convincing people to stay in. A major hang-up to recruiting more new soldiers are the fitness and academic requirements. Some services are struggling more than the others. The Army is certainly struggling the most. They're also the biggest, so that would just make sense. They're revisiting some of the fitness standards and some of the academic standards right now to, to try and scramble for the end of this fiscal year. If you're going to be a cyber technician, do you really need to be able to lift X number of pounds and run five miles. Uh, I think over time we're going to have to target the expectations of our service members based on the kinds of jobs they're doing. The military has found itself getting dragged into domestic politics more than in the past and in new ways. Disproportionately of the age group of American youth that we're talking about, the military recruits from certain geographical concentrations of America. It's more geographical than it is class or race or gender specific. And these areas tend to be more conservative. Those that tend to be interested come from Southern states where we have a lot of installations and from families in which there has at least been one family member that served. So 80% of our service members now have legacy in their background. We're entering a space where more people on the right and more people on the left have more bones to pick with the military and the kind of life that they're gonna have to live there. You know, there's this perception about the military is going woke and the, there are all these cultural wars inside the, inside the military. But to be honest with you, I'm not sure how much of that actually trickles down to that young 18 year old recruit from middle America who's trying to decide what he or she wants to do uh, to, to improve themselves and their future. The state-by-state -state fight over abortion rights could also become a factor. Military personnel stationed in one state could have access to abortion rights while others may not. There's a potential that you'll have some folks who are hesitant to join because they don't know if they're gonna get sent somewhere where they don't have access to healthcare that they believe is a human right.
Health factors have always been a reason for the shrinking pool of recruits, but new factors are exacerbating the crisis. You've now got legal marijuana in much of America, and that's not okay for the troops to have with it not being federally legalized. The information age is also changing how recruits are screened. Perhaps certain data and information that's available now to recruiters that wasn't available in the past can possibly skew or change um, attitudes towards a potential recruit. Military Health System Genesis is a new computer system that connects a variety of healthcare record systems together, allowing a recruiter to see a candidate's health background during the recruiting process and determine if they are eligible to serve. When they turned on electronic health record systems that made it so they could see the entirety of applicants' prescription histories and almost all of their medical records, whether they were seeing military or civilian doctors. Think if your medical records are in my chart or you know, one of those online health management portals, the Army can see those now if you're an applicant trying to join because you sign a records release as part of that process. And so informal practices of coaching recruits to omit certain parts of their medical history to streamline their enlistment came to a screeching halt. In a bureaucracy as large as this one, it is the Defense Department is the largest bureaucracy on the planet. And one as large as this one, I'm okay with in, informed individuals making you know specific choices on a case by case basis to sort of let in certain people when needed, even if it's a gray area of the rules. And this would certainly uh, that this could slow that down, that transparency. I also would put it on. Uh, the Army in particular, to look at whether or not that should disqualify. If you had ADHD as a child, but no longer have ADHD, why should that be a disqualifying factor? If you had asthma as a young child, but don't have it now. So I, I do think that there needs to be a, a complete reboot of the recruitment evaluation. Now the stakes are really real for some of these medical standards and when it comes to other ones related to mental health there's very real concerns about whether the military is the right environment for people who have previously shown symptoms of mental illness. But at the same time if you can have 50% of your ranks filled with perfect soldiers from a medical perspective or 100% of the ranks filled with, you know, people who are either perfect in the eyes of the medical standards or otherwise are able to pull it together and do their job. You know, you've got to go with the latter. The COVID vaccine is one point of controversy that is not going away among the armed forces. This was a unique scenario in terms of its timeline development and testing, as you know. And so that's where service members are pushing back. But ultimately, policymakers and our military leadership have a responsibility to ensure we have a, a force that is ready to fight if needed. And this means a healthy force. So if at the time, policymakers thought a vaccine was required to keep the force healthy, then it should have been instituted. But as I said, things continuously change and have to be reevaluated. Regardless of how you consider it as a health policy decision, the fact of the matter is, is that around a third of Americans between the ages of 18 and 40, so kind of that prime demographic that the military needs to reach, about a third of them aren't fully vaccinated, which means they're completely off the table from the start. You know, having the COVID vaccine is going to prevent you from getting COVID, but it's also going to prevent you from spreading it. And, you know, the, the U.S. S. Teddy Roosevelt had over 600 cases and one service member actually died. So I, I just don't think that that argument carries a lot of weight. Another component that is factoring into the Pentagon subpar military recruitment is morale and if there's even motivation to serve. Now, Americans' faith and trust in all institutions are declining from police to Supreme Court to church and organized religion, but the numbers show that for the U.S. military in particular, it's nothing short of a collapse in the last three years. It's very specific. I think it's important to differentiate between decisions taken by policymakers and the professionalism and conduct of the U.S. Armed Forces. Mm -hmm.